Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Live, the regular Friday lunchtime concert series based at St Francis Church, Ashton Gate. <clears throat> I'm Jennifer, this is Tim, we're the Bieber recorder duo. I'm streaming from my home and teaching studio today. So I've been asked by the organisers to make a couple of requests before we begin playing. Uh, the first is to please press the button marked subscribe to support the Lunchtime Live channel if you haven't already. Um, this helps to raise the profile of the online concerts and it also means that you get notifications um, when there's new material. <clears throat> also, please do remember Lunchtime Live is run entirely on donations and I'm sure you're aware that um, all of the music industry, in fact the entire performing arts industry is having a really rough time at the moment and it's tremendously important that we support and encourage um, music venues and the um, people at St Francis Ashton Gate are no exception. They're a really, really fundamental part of the, um, the music scene in Bristol now and so please do support them and encourage them. Um, Hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to actually go back to the venue and do concerts there. So, if you could donate, that would be fantastic. Follow the links on the website. Um, final thing is, please don't be shy. Leave a comment or a message. <clears throat> Tim and I won't see it while we're playing, obviously, but we will take a look back afterwards and see what you've been talking about. So, we're going to start off um, we're playing a piece by Mattison, who was a Baroque composer, died in 1764, and we're playing a sonata number three for two recorders, and we're playing the, this piece on our Baroque pitch recorders, and we've got relatively matching instruments, so enjoy. Sonata number three by Mattison. Head joint, not quite straight, there we go. <clears throat>
So that was Sonata Number no. Three by Mattison, and as you heard, there were four movements there. Uh, moving on, um, so we've uh, we've called this concert Bieber Bubble, simply because um, what with the, the lockdown rules, up until the change in the lockdown rules allowing for household bubbles, we weren't able to rehearse together at all, and so we spent a lot of time working separately, working on solos, working on different things. And um, so we started getting a little bit inventive, and particularly Tim got a little bit inventive. I'll let him explain. So the next uh, piece, we will be showing you uh, a video that I made in my house. Uh, it's a three-part uh, piece, uh, so for three recorders. Um, so I had to do some video editing to get uh, three copies of me playing the piece simultaneously. It's by a composer called Thomas Preston, uh, who was an organist in uh, Windsor Chapel. Uh, and he, uh, this piece is an organ piece that has been adapted uh, for three recorders. And what you'll find when you hear the piece is that uh, at the bottom there's two lines playing a, a repeated ground bass, and then another recorder plays an elaborate uh, variations on top of that ground bass. And I played on two very inauthentic recorders. These are not 17th century recorders at all. These are both 20th century recorders. You'll be seeing that I'm playing this one, which is a, a modernization of the recorder with uh, lots of keys. And uh, also um, it's a very loud recorder. Uh, you will see this one again later on in a second video I made. And then the two lower parts I played on this recorder, uh, which as you can see is square in cross section. It, we did not buy it in uh, IKEA. Uh, it is a genuine recorder. Uh, and, um, but it does go very well for an organ piece because uh, the square cross section of the recorder is uh, inspired by the design of organ pipes. So this is a piece by Thomas Preston called Upon La Ré Mi.
So that was Upon Lamy Ray by Thomas Preston. So um, those of you who tuned in to my uh, recital for Lunchtime Live a few months ago will know that I really love playing modern music and particularly music um, by Australian composers and uh, it wouldn't be a concert by me if it didn't have some Australian composers in it. So um, I'm going to play for you a piece by Australian composer Ros Bant and she's a recorder player herself, a very good one, and she writes um, really fantastic pieces for solo recorder, um, including this one which is called Flight. It's for the treble recorder, it's this one, and um, this it's, it's inspired by watching birds um, flying, um, particularly long distance, and so as I play this, what I would love for you to think about is imagining what it would like, what it would be like to be one of those birds, like a massive gull, sort of soaring over the ocean. And it actually says over the top of the music, like the flight of a gull, expressively with air currents. So see if you can hear the air currents. <clears throat> That was Flight by Ros Band. I'm going to hand over to Tim for the next piece. So the next piece is by a composer called Joseph Pla. Uh, you have probably never heard of him, and indeed I have never heard of him until a few weeks ago when there was a programme on the radio about the Pla brothers. 
they were uh, three traveling musicians during the mid 18th century. They traveled around Europe uh, giving concerts and uh, playing in the best orchestras uh, of the time. And they were all three of them oboists, uh, and they also played the uh, violin and the flute. Um, and I thought, having heard about these composers, I thought there must be something here that, uh, there must be some music here that we can borrow. Uh, recorder players are never against, uh, never averse to borrowing music from other instruments. Ooh, definitely. Definitely. So uh, went online, found some music by them, uh, by Joseph Pla. And so what we're going to play today is a sonata uh, originally for two flutes or two violins uh, that we have adapted for two recorders and as uh, usual uh, three movements. I have picked up the right instrument haven't I? 440. Excellent. This is a running joke. I'm, I'm always picking up the wrong instrument. Apologies.
So there you have it, a sonata by Joseph Pla. And I don't know about you, but I just absolutely love the 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 apparent simplicity of that music. It's actually really tricky to play, but it sounds so beautiful. Um, so the next piece is um, thoroughly different, but also a treat. Um, so about eight years ago, <coughs> um, uh, my friend Caitlin Rowley and I went along to an exhibition at Tate Modern um, of Miro. Uh, it's, literally, it was eight years ago. And um, Caitlin is a composer and we went along to this exhibition and um, later on she was in the middle of a project and um, asked if, well, I asked if she would write me a piece as part of this project. And she did. And it was, um, it's entitled Triptych for One and is based and inspired by some of the paintings that we saw on the Miro exhibition. Um, like I say, she composed this for me eight years ago and I've been really, really slack in actually finding a time and a place where I could perform it. Um, I have recorded it, but I haven't performed it live. So I'm doing it now. Sorry, Caitlin, um, it's taken a while. Um, but I'm gonna perform it for you now. And it's obviously a triptych, triptych for one. It's based on these pictures by Mira. I've actually got the postcards. So um, they're, Quite slow. They have a number of extended techniques in them for the recorder: multiphonics, flutter tonguing, quarter tones, finger vibrato, singing through the instrument, all of the big effects. And it's um, it it sort of follows Miro's model of using the same or similar material. So they take a, a an approach of looking at them same the same material but from three different angles. So. Um, the first is based on this painting. The second is based on this painting. And the third short movement is based on this painting. And I'm not quite certain how I can have these up. Perhaps Tim can hold them up and I'll, I'll tell him when to swap them over. Um, unfortunately, the postcards are nothing like the original in size, but then they wouldn't fit in this room because they're absolutely enormous. So here we have triptych for one.
So that was the world premiere of Triptych for One by Caitlin Rowley. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to hand over to Tim for the next piece. The next piece is a, another video recording that I made uh, during the last few months. Uh, I've been working for some time now on a set of studies by a French composer called Narcisse Bousquet. And I've been playing them again on this uh, un slightly unusual modernised recorder with keys to help with the extreme register. And it's also much louder than a typical recorder. Uh, I played this study uh, in the previous Lunchtime Live concert uh, and I thought maybe it needed a bit more work to get it a little better. Uh, so I studied it some more and then went away and uh, recorded the video. So this is uh, study number six by Narcisse Bousquet. So that was Tim playing Etude Number no. 6 by Narcisse Bousquet. So the next piece is another Australian piece, strangely enough, by um, Australian composer Benjamin Thorne. It's called Forestry in New England and it's not referring to the United States, it's referring to a region, actually the region that I come from, um, which is sort of halfway between Sydney and Brisbane but um, not on the coast, up in the mountains. Um, whoever called it New England was either deluded or very homesick because it doesn't look anything like England at all, um, but it is very beautiful. Um, so this piece is in three movements. Uh, the first movement, um, it's, it's got a sort of a, a brooding, dreamy quality to it and it reminds me very much of when I was a teenager and went on a school trip, music trip, and we were driving very early in the morning um, through the, the highest part of the mountain range and um, I remember looking out at the trees, um, snow gums, snow eucalypts, so they've got silvery bark and there was a fog and the sunlight, was, the sun was just going to come up, it was burning through the fog and so the trees started to glow out of the fog and that's what this, the first movement of this reminds me of. The second movement uses lots of multiphonics 
and it has a, a lovely rhythmic quality to it. It's in 7-8. Ben Thorne says he's addicted to 7-8. And um, it, uh, it sort of reminds me of small animals or insects scrabbling about in the undergrowth of the trees. And the third movement is just riotously fun and reminds me of when I was a little kid and we used to go to, you know how in this country they have forest schools where um, kids get to, you know, typically sort of five, six year olds get to go out into the forest and, you know, walk through the trees and collect leaves and, you know, toast marshmallows over campfires and all that sort of stuff. Um, well, in Australia we have bush schools and the local one was called Thalgara and all school kids ended up going to Thalgara and this movement reminds me of being six years old and in the middle of a group of 30 six-year-olds rampaging through some relatively safe bushland at Thalgara. So this is called Forestry in New England for Bass Recorder and I hope you enjoy it. Thank <laughs> you. 
today. Um, our final piece is a piece by Bois Mortier. Um, it's a concerto in C for two recorders. I'm making sure that I'm picking up the correct instrument and um, it's in three movements and we're tremendously lucky to play them on matching recorders that we had especially made for us by Australian maker Michael Grenter. We're very lucky to have such beautiful instruments.
just tune that note. It's fine. What do we do? Just finish the food. Okay. Finish the movement. Thank you for calling. Ah! Oh. No. Quit. You, let's start. Let's just finish the movement. So you start again from, from that. From the beginning. No, not from the beginning. Just from that spot. Apologies. That is when someone tries to call to tell me that my non-existent Amazon Prime account has been compromised. So, thank you so much for listening today. Um, if you enjoyed our music, and if you would like to hear the Bois Mortier without a telephone interruption, you can go to um, the Beaver Recorder Duo YouTube channel. Uh, just search up Beaver Recorder Duo. Um, uh, you'll find lots of other stuff on there. You can also visit our sister site, which is Pink Noise Recorder Quintet. Um, that concludes today's Lunchtime Live event. Uh, please come back 10 past 1 on next Friday, 31st, where you'll get to hear Richard Lee Harris on piano. Keep an eye on the website for the rest of the schedule. There's plenty more um, in the offing, particularly over September. 
a final message from the organisers. It's not too late to leave a comment and please subscribe to the channel and please do consider leaving a donation. Um, it's tremendously important that we have venues um, in the local music scene to perform in and St Francis is one of the true gems of the Bristol music scene. So please do consider donating. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed today's concert. We've been the Bieber Recorder Duo. Thank you very much and goodbye.